I got my taste buds clubbed in submission. Is this the best place to brunch at Disney World? Prince of the Bear today we're here at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort, the premier resort, because it's time for a uh, brunch slash breakfast. Grand Floridian Cafe did a little breakfast update. Yeah, we like updates. This is your number one choice of food and infotainment. We're here to investigate. So remember, she's vegan. I'm not. I'm not feeling very grand. It's time to foodie and chill. This is a nice spread of buttermilk biscuits with two kinds of butter, an orange butter and then regular butter because what is more Floridian than that? Citrus butter. Citrus butter. Look at that. Nice fluffy biscuit. I'm even gonna take a little bit of this whipped citrus butter. Give it a, a nice berry spread. That's the kind of biscuit I would let choke me just so I could feel something. That is a very nice fluffy biscuit. You're gonna need some water with it. Give that four out of five points. The original avocado toast has a little bit of a glow up. The presentation is still the same. We have a new little like fire roasted sauce here. And then they've actually seasoned the tomatoes. It's not just a bunch of tomatoes. It's like fire roasted now. So I'm just gonna take a bite here from the end and, and cheers to the avocado toast. It is toast-tastic. Um, is it in my top five best avocado toast at Walt Disney World of all time? No. But it is in my top 10 and it does get bonus points for being available until two, where most places only have their breakfast until like 10 30 or 11. so if you're like a late breakfast person this is perfect is it better than olivia's mm, I don't know. but it's kind of on par i would give it a four out of five toasts it is it's beautiful california approved californian approved avocado toast so this it's been long been one of the best contenders for the best avocado toast on Walt Disney World property. Its configuration has changed, but it stayed mostly the same. But there's different display and seasonings. It's looking kind of cute. Very demure. Very mindful. Very cutesy. Yes, I know the trend is dead, but I can't get out of my head. And if I gotta suffer, then so do you. The seasoned tomatoes, they gave a huge difference. Plus the quality of toast. I know people think you got the avocado, the toppings, but the bread is very important. I don't want your crusty wonder white bread, okay? I want a nice seeded artisanal, okay? Because I'm a true millennial, artisanal bread, okay? If these are supposed to help us, you know, plan for our future and we stop eating avocado, we can buy a house. This is probably like a Two and a half bedroom, 2.5 bath, balcony, a nice little reading nook, you know? You can cuddle up with coffee and whatever millennials drink in the morning. The toast itself, 4.25 out of 5 claws. It's enough to, to piss off your parents, you should probably eat. So here we have the Mickeyest of Mickey Waffles. The superior, the king of Mickey Waffles. Not a little tiny deal. This is a Mickey Waffle that's about, well, it's about as big as my head was as a child. The head now is huge, so I can't really say as big as my head. But, of course, like with anything, you always start with the ear because the mouse never hears your complaints. For as long as I remain a Disney adult, which is probably gonna be until my last breath, uh, I will never understand the fascination of Mickey Waffles. However, this is a technically proficiently made waffle, crisp on the outside, soft on the inside, and there is more than enough channels for syrup. So, I know they give you two. You don't need to use both, but it's your vacation, so do you. I would give it Three and a half out of five points. This is the newest addition to the Grand Floridian breakfast brunch menu, a powerful 
the tofu scramble is still something that you can ask for, but I wanted to branch out a little bit, even though I love that tofu scramble, and try this new dish. Um, we lost a power bowl at Ale and Compass. Not for breakfast, though, but we lost that, but we gained something here. So I'm gonna do, yeah, just the tofu with the quinoa. I think that's enough to gauge. The sauce that they put on this is really like the star of the dish. It's really good and helps everything come together really well. The tofu on its own is just lightly seared and there's no like extra flavors to it. In the scramble they added like seasonings and turmeric and all these other things. I think that's what this is missing. If um, they season their tofu correctly and maybe like just season all the other things and then put them together with the sauce, it would be a super elevated bowl. On its own, this is great though for like, say you just did a, a marathon or you just want something light before you go to magic or something like that. This definitely fits the bill. I would just like it to be just a little bit more juiced. I do have pocket parm, maybe I'll add it to that. but. On its own, I would give it a 3.75 out of 5 tofu bowls. It's going to satisfy my tofu craving. Tofu power bowl. Is it going to make me powerful? Am I gaining superpowers? Or just the amount of quinoa on a dish that makes it a power bowl? I don't really know. But you have all of the things that I suppose when we consider a healthy breakfast, tofu, edamame, some, uh, some state of pickled carrots, pickles, mushrooms and broccoli. Sorbonne and veggies. Kind of odd, but you know what? We're gonna roll with it. Because we like experiencing new things. Actually, I'm just gonna get in all the veggies. Because the princess already isn't getting enough tofu. Take one block of tofu. For a nice, bare sized bite. There is a whole lot going on that bowl. And I find that to be the case with a lot of different power bowls but you have like the quinoa, the, that rough texture, and then you have the edamame, the carrots, the pickles, the mushroom, and the broccoli. This is a lot to eat all at once. Uh, the sauce does help to tie everything together. And honestly, in this case, I think the tofu in the bowl is probably the weakest thing in the bowl. One, there's not much of it. Two, you don't get any sauce on it. It's basically just a flavorless soy cube, which I think was what a lot of people are afraid of with tofu. Now we've gotten other tofu dishes before. We they got like a off-menu tofu scramble sometimes uh, when it's available. And they can cook tofu. Question is, why does this tofu feel like something uh, that you left in the back of the fridge? Just kind of forgot about it, you know? It has potential. But that tofu, the tofu is sad. I'd almost just rather the bowl without the tofu. Honestly, I would give it three out of five bowls. I got a club sandwich at a place known for brunch and breakfast most of the day. Uh, I just wasn't feeling a breakfast sandwich. This is what I got last time. I thought about pancakes and I was like, eh. But the, the best thing about Grand Floridian is the power of choice. Especially at Grand Floridian Cafe because you can do brunch or you can do lunch. You can do part of dinner if you still like. But this is probably not the prettiest looking club I've ever seen, but we judge food and people here by the content of their character, not about the outward sloppy look of their sandwiches, because that would be rude. I appreciate the foodie Olympic effort it takes to make that bite. It's definitely a double-decker monstrosity, the turkey, the cheese, the sauce, having together. Honestly, it's a very good club. I could do with like a little bit of quality of bread, maybe better toast. The sandwich itself, the flavors, I got absolutely no complaints about. I feel like they clubbed my taste buds in this submission. It's probably not why it's called a club, but from now on, that's my head cannon. Uh, it's a tasty sandwich. I'm giving that a solid four out of five claws. I would order it again. Steak fries, the cheaters of the fry test. They pass the test every time, but the true test is flavor, above all things. They could stand to be crispier. And honestly, they taste a little burnt. Just the oil does. Anyway. Give it two and a half out of five.
This is the margarita. I feel like it has suffered some shrinkflation because the glass used to be bigger and now it's more expensive and smaller. So not really sure what's up with that. But we have had this drink before. There is a non-alcoholic version as well that's like a jalapeno one that's really nice. I recommend that one too. We'll go one of our last videos for that. At least it tastes like breakfast. I would give it four out of five tequilas. It's a little it's got a little bit too much um, orange juice, but it's still nice. What morning is complete without a nice bourbon cocktail? I'm sure some mornings, but not, not my morning. Uh, and a nice bourbon cocktail with honey and ginger. So now for the princess, more for me. Mm. Lemon juice, honey, a little bit of ginger. I thought the ginger was gonna be weird, but it actually works quite well. It reminds me of the honeybee drink that I got at Boma, uh, which is, like my new favorite drink on property that I can only get there. It breaks my heart a little bit. But this is close. I'll give this four and a half out of five claws. I need more honey slash agave based bourbon cocktails. Do you have a recommendation when I can order on the regular? Let me know in the comments down here somewhere. If Ram Food Eating Cafe is determined to do anything, they're determined to be the king of brunch. And I think they are. I think they're close. Yeah. I think between battling out between Olivia's and a couple other places, while good, it's a good fight. I would say consistency-wise, it's not the most consistent, but it's definitely more consistent than Olivia's. Mm. Because I would argue that portions of Steakhouse 71 are brunch. And as long as Steakhouse 71 exists, I don't know if I'd come here for brunch all the time. I would agree with that. And uh, Wilderness Lodge also, they have mm. pretty decent brunch, mm. so... What do you know then? What is your favorite Disney brunch spot? You let us know in the comments below. Now, if there's anything else you can see us do, that will always be the place to find us. Hit the notification bell. You want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. And if you go in the comments and you argue that Homecoming has the best place for brunch, Bear is going to yeet himself into those comments and tell you why you're wrong. Fight me. But you heard the girl.